Hey, how it's going guys? In this video, I'm going to show you that how I am building a Slack based application that basically helps me generate insights from my Slack workspace, right? And I'm going to use MCP server to do this because, you know, with MCP server, we can connect with our Slack connect, uh, you know, workspace and bring all the data and generate some kind of insights. If you look at here on my screen, to do that, I'm using something named Rube. So Rube is basically from Composio that basically now provides an interface also to kind of, you know, work with MCP servers and it has, uh, it, it itself an MCP server, by the way, and has integrations with more than 500 plus tools. Now, if you look at here on the marketplace, we have Gmail, GitHub, Notion, Slack, Twitter, Linear, you know, different types of developer tools like GitHub, Superbase, and so on and so forth. Now, the beauty of it is that you can use this with chat platforms, identic IDEs, you know, in your Python code or Nten and more, right? And how to install that is a question. So if you look at here, they have they have a very good documentation that shows how to uh, you know select your platform and install Rube within that platform. So I have I have been using Cursor for this, right? So Cursor, if you don't know Cursor, Cursor is an AI code editor. It's basically an agentic AI IDE. It basically helps you you know build applications faster. Now I'm I'm using Rube here within the Cursor. So if you look at here, what I did, I have in this MCP. I says okay installed servers rube it has six tools if you look at all the tools and uh, which is available like slack you know it's like github pr you know it has twitter digest search to notion search to seeds etc now if you look at this here right this is how you install a uh, rube within cursor so you click on add to cursor and you click on install in install mcp server that's it when you click on install it automatically installs it it will take you to uh, authentication thingy. If we first ask for authentication on Rube uh, dashboard here, and you just authenticate and it will redirect you to cursor. You can see it says authenticate and start using 500 plus apps with Rube in cursor chat, which is amazing. So if you look at here, what I did, I said, let's build a, a SAP single page application react app that will connect with my Slack and fetch all the data, which is there, like I'm in the chat and then generate some kind of insights. The moment I do that, if you see here, it says, I will help you build a React SPA that connects to Slack and generates insights from your chat data. Let me start by exploring the available tools and creating a plan for this project. You immediately call this tool, Rube Search Tool. And based on that tool, you can find out it has found you know, the connections with my Slack workspace. You can find it out over here. It says, great, I can see that you already have an active Slack connection. Now let me create a comprehensive plan, so on and so forth. It's been creating all the files that is required. If you see this, basically we are doing a wipe coding, but then we are doing the wipe coding with the power of Rube because with Rube now, I don't have to kind of worry about writing my own uh, you know, custom APIs to connect with tools like Notions and you know, Neon databases, Superbase, GitHub, whatever. I'll just use this, an unified interface named Rube you know, the true MCP server and just connect with all these tools and build powerful applications. That's the plan, right? Now, if you look at here, it's been creating requirements that TXT and that's why I don't like because they use versions and that's one of the drawbacks of doing wipe coding. I want, I don't want to use versions. I want to use all the latest uh, libraries, right? So but that is fine. Keep this in mind here. So I'm on free plan on cursor. Uh, if you have a paid plan, that's better. But doesn't matter you can still use rube on the free plans okay now this has been creating the application here you see it says slack data insight it has a source where we have an app.jsx and whatnot looks good uh, let's keep on keep all it's using material css that you see here right it's creating a readme file let's read that readme here in a bit uh in backend you can find out main.py it has written fast api the installation has to be uh we have to install all this actually Fantastic, right? Uh, fetch all. Let me start fetching the run. Now you can see my uh, my workspace name is Cortex Workspace. Uh, it has successfully fetched through Rube. So I'll just come here, bit side, and I'll show you can see here, right? Cortex AI Workspace is connected with user my username. This is my workspace URL, team ID, user ID. So it's able to connect with that. And if you see here, it says 
I have successfully fetched all the channels from your Slack workspace. Now let me update the backend to use this real data and then uh, of course fetch some messages history to basically build this insights and whatnot, right? So it's calling the Rube multi-execute tool that you see it over here. So that's the, that's the beauty of it. Let's, so I'll, of course, we'll be building this application here, a single page application. Of course, I'll make this open source also. So it will be on GitHub repository. You can just go and take that. Uh, that's how, it, how if you want to enhance this further, let me just run this. What you can do on cursor also, guys, you can, of course, make it run always. Okay. Uh, and create some sample data, so on and so forth. You can see it's a sentiment. It's an API of sentiments, an API of topics, uh, top users, uh, and so on and so forth. So I'll just go up. It's a very new Slack channel. I just created for this demo video uh, that you see. Uh, because on, we don't use Slack, I don't use Slack, but I just wanted to show you that how you can connect with Slack because Slack is one of the most famous tool, right? Uh, within the startup ecosystem, mainly not the enterprises. For enterprises, people use more Teams and you know other platforms. So let me just run this. We have to install, like, of course. And this is the power of vibe coding, guys. Not everybody is a developer, so a lot of people are now you know trying to do vibe coding, write uh, you know codes with. AI models and then build applications on top of it. So that's what we are doing here. Uh, this is also done. If you look at the startup.sh file, check Python 3.8. I'll probably make this 3.10 here. Keep all. Try again. Would you like me to help you run the applications? Yeah, yeah, run the application. Or we can also run that through terminal, that is fine. Uh, Node.js is not installed. Please install. This is the start.sh file. How do you see? Uh, first thing is it has to install all the dependencies. Clean up, clean up, clean up. Application started successfully. CD Python to now you can see it's installing the requirements file and after that it will work could not open requirements dot requirements dot txt requirements dot txt root directory cd dot dot Okay, now you can see it's installed because it was running from the backend file, which is main.py, and there was no requirements txt over there. So now you can see how easy it is to kind of guys build applications as at least as a proof of concept. I'm not saying that you can build very scalable or maintainable app through vibe coding. Maintainability is a big issue. You know, it's very difficult to maintain the code uh, when generated by AI because they write so much of code, right? Which Kind of doesn't make sense. Let me check if both the servers are running. Slack data API is running. Is it really running? I hope this runs on the fast API application. It runs on. Yeah, you can see. So we have Slack data API. We have our API now running in the backend. And how quickly it built everything live. I haven't edited this video at all. You know, you can see uh, the power of. You know, the power of. Uh, MCP servers, guys, right? And in, in that case, Ruby is amazing. I really loved it. And you can see the dashboard. We got our Slack data insights, total 89 messages, uh, active users, the channels, and average daily messages, last update. This is how it will look like. Codrix AI workspace is my Slack workspace. Uh, we build this single page applications uh, using Ruby. Uh, you can see it over here. You can find out the channels right now. Of course, these are not working. They are dummy. These are fine. I just wanted to show you these things here that how it can fetch these informations using Rube uh, over here. And of course, you can further enhance this the way you want to build it. Okay. And make sure that your this is enabled. If this is not enabled, you will find it very difficult to use. So Rube has to be enabled and you can add all the tools from here as well. So if you come here, right, go to marketplace. 
from the marketplace you can enable all your uh, tools actually let's say i want to enable notion so i'll click on notion and of course built by composio so it will ask you to set it up you know for this app you can see it says connection to notion i have to log in on my notion or something yeah you can see this is my notion thingy uh i'll say shared let's say i just do no not shared. let's say private and uh, let's say what what should i select here uh okay let's say i select this page and i allow access so this we now Ru will have access to that particular page uh and this is how you can install anything you want to install and now you can build on top of it guys that's that's how powerful it is and it's this is right this is like a great development in the mcp ecosystem as well i also made some of the guys from composio at pycon india 2025 that was organized in bengaluru and i met those guys and i saw a big banner of rube there and i was asking about it and then i thought okay let's try to explore rube and that's how i started exploring rube that's all for this video guys i wanted to show you uh, that how it works how you can install within cursor if you want to know more about rube i have a couple of other videos on how you can do that with cloud desktop uh, and also how you can use it that's here on the interface as well so watch that video also i'll give the link in, links in description if you like the video please hit the like icon if you haven't subscribed the channel yet please do subscribe the channel guys that motivates me to create more such videos in your future if you have any thoughts or feedbacks let me know in the comment box you can also reach out to me through my social media channel. Find those information on channel banner and channels about us. That's all. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.